the time t, we are at the uh, vertex vt, then uh, again, we move to its neighbor with, uh, with the probability uh, that is proportional to its degree one over dt. So, uh, so there are several aspects of random walks in regular graph. We want to see uh, what happens if, if the number of steps uh, uh, goes to infinity or it gets uh, enough large. And uh, about the starting point, uh, it could be uh, any fixed vertex or it could be chosen under uh, some initial distribution. It doesn't matter at the, uh, at the final outcome of the, uh, of the limiting distribution that we are going to looking at. <clears throat> uh, and we have a, a vector P of distributions of the uh, ver uh, vertices of time t. So, uh, so pt is, is the distribution of the vt, which is the, the vertex which we meet at the time t or step t. And uh, uh, the component i of this vector is the probability that we see vt at the uh, we see vertex i at the, at, at the step t. So here's an example. So consider this graph. So P0 is the initial distribution, which means that uh, we start uh, by probability one at vertex one. So vertex one is, is the starting uh, point of the starting vertex of the random walk. And we go to one of its neighbors, five or three, uh, each with probability one half. Then at this step one, uh, this is our probability distribution. So at this step one, we are at three with probability one half or at five uh, with the same probability. Now uh, at, this, at the next step, uh, again, if we are at the vertex three, we go to its, uh, one of its neighbors with probability one half. Or uh, if we are at five, again, we go to one of its neighbors with probability one over four because uh, the degree is four, five is four. So what we get is, is this one. So this is the probability distribution at step two. Uh, so this is, so for example, the first component is seven over 24, which means that uh, at this step two, we will be at vertex one with this probability. Or uh, there's uh, the probability at being at this step two at vertex two is zero. So there is no way that at this step we reach uh, vertex two and, and so forth. And uh, uh, with the same argument, we can uh, 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 we can compute the distribution of, of the, of the uh, next steps. So, uh, random walk has a close connection with a matrix uh, called transition matrix, which is defined uh, uh, by this way. Uh, so, if, if the graph is uh, has n vertex, this matrix is an m by matrix where its ij entry is one over degree of vertex i if uh, the vertices are adjacent and uh, if they are not adjacent, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's zero, the, the, the entry ij. So for example, for this graph, uh, this is the uh, transition matrix. For example, this entry P13 is 1 over degree of 1, which is uh, degree of 1 is 2, so this entry is 1, 2, or here uh, P13 uh, is 1 over degree of 3, which is uh, uh, 1 third. <clears throat> And uh, so what is the connection of this transition matrix with the random walk? Uh, the connection is simple. If uh, 
So for example, at, at the example we just saw, uh, the initial distribution is, is one zero zero zero. Uh, and the, the distribution at the next step was, uh, was this uh, vector P1, which is simply just uh, P, P0 times P. So this is, uh, so P1 is simply just the first row of P, so, and uh, that is the P0 times P. And uh, if we look at the uh, distribution P2, and we can see that this is just uh, P1 times P, and etc. So, uh, so in, in, in general, uh, Pt is Pt minus 1 times P. Uh, so this uh, observation uh, helps us to uh, uh, to find uh, find a limit for for the uh, uh, distribution p t when when t goes to infinity. And uh, so by induction, we can see that uh, p t is just p zero times p to the power t. P zero was the initial distribution. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, for, for our graph, we might have a distribution that each, uh, it, it remains the same at, at each step. Uh, such a distribution is called stationary. So, if the, so if, uh, the initial distribution P0 is chosen such that uh, it, at any other steps, uh, the distribution remains the same, then uh, that distribution is called stationary. So for example, for this graph, uh, this distribution is uh, stationary because we can compute, uh, so this is P0, we can compute P1 by multiplying in P and we see that it remains the same and uh, also the other ones. So this distribution is, uh, is stationary. Uh, but we can see it's uh, uh, how we come up with this distribution from the degree sequence of the graph. Uh, so if we if we take the uh, this vector pi, which is uh, at its uh, component i is the degree of vertex i over uh, two times the number of edges of the graph then this is a stationary distribution in any graph. And what uh, we see here uh, is just uh, this distribution, which is obtained by the degree uh, sequence of the graph uh, over the two times the number of edges. Or, uh, so this is, uh, you can say that uh, this is the um, the average degree of, uh, of every vertex. So we see that uh, the stationary distribution is convergent because it remains the same at the, at the same, uh, at all the steps. But the point is that uh, any other uh, uh, random work started by any other initial uh, distribution also converges to the same stationary distribution. So if we compute the, our first example, uh, so we saw that P1 and P2 are this, and for example, if we uh, compute the distribution at the step uh, 15, uh, 50, then, then we get this distribution, uh, which is approximately uh, equal to this vector, which is the stationary distribution of, of this graph. So this is a general phenomenon that uh, uh, starting with any initial distribution, the random work converges uh, to, to the stationary distribution. This is a standard uh, theorem 
uh, in random box that if G is uh, not bipartite, then starting with any initial distribution, uh, the, the vector of distribution converges to the stationary distribution. Uh, so, uh, once more, if, if our graph is uh, regular, then all the degrees are the same and uh, this pi is just a uniform distribution over the vertices. So we, we have uh, uh, this particular case that if G is regular uh, and of course non-bipartite, then, uh, then PT converges to the uniform distribution. Actually, this is the importance of uh, the random box, um, which uh, so all this uh, application in computer science come from this fact that uh, you can get a uh, uniform distribution of objects by just uh, having a random work at uh, uh, of a good length. Uh, uh, then this can be used, for example, to generate uh, random bits and, and uh, many other applications which has in, in computer science. But this is not uh, the, our topic now. Uh, so uh, we saw that uh, the random work uh, actually always uh, under some conditions Convergence to a uniform distribution in random uh, graphs uh, in in regular graphs, but uh, the point is that uh, uh, an important factor is that uh, after how many steps we get close enough to uniform distribution. This is very important in in the applications uh, where random work can be used. So there is a parameter uh, for, for the random work uh, called the mixing time, uh, which is basically is the number of steps uh, required to we get close enough to distribution. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, a roughly definition, the, the precise definition uh, uh, requires uh, 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 more parameters, but but for for our purpose, this is just enough. <clears throat> uh, so the mixing time for the random graph has has a very uh, close connection with the eigenvalues of the transition matrix P. So for the transition matrix, we can see that its eigenvalues lie between one and minus one, and the biggest one is always one. And uh, it is known that uh, for regular graph, mixing time is about uh, log n over one over eta two, where eta, eta two is the second the largest eigenvalue of p. So, so the mixing time, which is a parameter to, to control the speed of uh, convergence of the random walk, uh, is connected with the second eigenvalue of the transition matrix P by, by this relation that we see here. <clears throat> So this uh, log n factors, uh, so if uh, we just uh, consider regular graph with fixed number of vertices, this is the same. So what, what is important here is uh, one over one minus eta two uh, in, this, uh, in this relation. So this is called the relaxation time of the graph. And uh, so here is a conjecture by Aldous and Phil who conjectured that uh, over the family of regular graph with n vertices, uh, the maximum relaxation time is, is uh, this value, is, is about uh, three n square over two by two. <clears throat> uh, 
So this is uh, the the main motivation in this talk and uh, in our work. Uh, so we are going to translate this in terms of just the Laplacian matrix and, and the eigenvalues of the Laplacian and then uh, see uh, what can uh, we say for, for the, this maximum relaxation time translated to Laplacian matrix and which graphs attain this uh, extreme value. So let me just uh, recall the distance matrices and Laplacian matrices of graphs, and then uh, we come back to this conjecture and uh, uh, give another uh, equivalent form of that for in terms of the uh, eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix. So a distance matrix. Uh, just to recall, uh, for a vertex, uh, for a graph with vertices one uh, up to n, the adjacency matrix is an um, n by a matrix where ij entry is one if i and j are adjacent and zero otherwise. Again, for, for our example, uh, here is its adjacency matrix. The adjacency matrix is a symmetric and real matrix, so its eigenvalues are all real numbers. And uh, it is known that if the graph is uh, connected, then uh, uh, the largest eigenvalue has multiplicity one. So the second largest is, uh, is strictly less than lambda one if, if the graph is connected. And their difference, lambda one minus lambda two, is, is the spectral gap of the graph. And uh, what is the connection with, uh, with the mixing time is that uh, actually the spectral gap is d times one over eta two. So uh, d times one minus eta two. And uh, as we saw, one over one minus eta two was the, was the relaxation time of the random walk on, on a graph G. Uh, so in, in, in case of uh, regular graph, spectral graph can be uh, expressed as an eigenvalue of the, of the Laplacian matrix. Uh, our arguments in what follows is based on Laplacian matrix. So just me recall that what is the Laplacian matrix of a graph. So the Laplacian matrix is just uh, d of g minus a of g, a of g is the adjacency matrix and uh, d of g is uh, the diagonal matrix of vertex degrees. So again, for example, here is the Laplacian matrix. So the diagonal entries are just vertex degrees and off diagonal entries just uh, the minus of the adjacency matrix. So uh, it is very easy to see that the spectral gap of the graph is actually equal to the second smallest uh, Laplacian eigenvalue, which is called the algebraic connectivity. This is, uh, this is only holds for, for regular graphs. And uh, so an eigenvector corresponding to algebraic connectivity is, is called a Fiddler vector of G. Uh, so there is a basic properties of Laplacian matrix that is uh, uh, basically it's positive semi-definite and uh, uh, if we multiply it by all one vector then we got zero so zero is an eigenvalue and uh, actually it is the smallest eigenvalue as I said uh, Laplacian positive semi-definite and the algebraic connectivity, uh, which was the second largest, uh, second smallest eigenvalue of Laplacian, is positive if and only if G is connected. So this is the reason why, uh, uh, why mu of G is called uh, the algebraic connectivity. And uh, it is known that mu of G is just the minimum of this Rayleigh quotient, which is taken over 
non-zero vectors which are uh, orthogonal to all one vector. <clears throat> and uh, also in, in this Rayleigh quotient, uh, uh, x dl gx is uh, equal to this uh, summation uh, where each term corresponds to uh, to a, an edge of, of the graph. <clears throat> so we see that uh, the relaxation time of a random work uh, can be expressed in terms of spectral gap and in the case of regular graphs, the spectral gap is the same as algebraic connectivity. So we can uh, give another form, equivalent form of all this field conjecture in terms of algebraic connectivity. So all this field conjecture says that algebraic connectivity of a deregular graph on N vertices is at least uh, this much. And the bound is attained at least for one value of t. <clears throat> so the rest of the talk will be about this, this conjecture. We are going to uh, prove this conjecture in some particular cases for, for particular values of t. Um, so the first uh, non-trivial case is d equal three because when d is two, we just talk about cycles, and for cycles, everything is known about uh, algebraic connectivity, etc. So the first non-trivial case is uh, d equal three or or cubic graphs. So uh, the problem for cubic graph was independently studied by Brand, Guiduli, and Imbrich. Uh, Imbrich. Uh, they actually study cubic graphs with minimum spectral gap or, or minimum algebraic connectivity, and they uh, determined uh, the structure of these graphs. So uh, depending of uh, what is n mod four, uh, which is uh, zero or two, so talking about uh, cubic graphs, the number of words should be even, so n is uh, zero or two mod four. So in the case that n is two mod four, uh, the upper graph is is the minimum graph. So we, we we just have to add more middle blocks here. And for the other case, this uh, the graph in bottom is is the minimum graph. Uh, I mean the the cubic graph having minimum uh, algebraic connectivity. So in their paper, uh, they left uh, uh, they left uh, the computation of of the algebraic connectivity of this family of graph. So uh, we did this, and uh, we actually computed uh, the the algebraic connectivity of uh, this family of cubic graphs, and uh, we come up with this result that uh, among cubic graphs, the minimum spectral gap is uh, is, uh, is about uh, uh, two times pi square over n square, and uh, from this, uh, all this field conjecture follows for cubic graph because if we put uh, if you put d equal three here, then we just get uh, 2 pi 2 over n2, and uh, we see that uh, the equality at, uh, same for, for, for cubic graphs. So the next uh, case is uh, quartic graphs or four regular graphs. So what we are going to do is to first uh, determine the structure of uh, quartic graphs, which have minimum algebraic connectivity, and then uh, we try to answer the, uh, or settle another case in, in the Aldous field conjecture. Uh, 
So we have a basic tool to, to determine the algebraic connecti graphs with minimum algebraic connectivity. So we can start for, uh, with any uh, quartic or four regular graph and we just perform this, uh, these switchings. So, uh, so suppose that we have two parallel edges, A, B and C, D, uh, such that A and C are not adjacent, B and D are not adjacent, and the other two edges might uh, exist or not, it doesn't matter. So uh, we replace these two parallel edges with two new parallel edges, A, C and B, D. And we denote this uh, operation by, by, by the notation switch of A, B, C, D. So it's clear that uh, when you perform the switching on a graph, the vertex degrees does not change because uh, uh, So uh, we remove one edges from each of these vertices and add one, uh, one new one to, to all of them. So the degree sequence remains the same, uh, which means that if we perform this uh, switching over the regular graphs of degree D, uh, the resulting graph is also uh, a D regular graph. Uh, but uh, the point is that if we perform this uh, uh, and you have uh, particular conditions over the component of the Fiddler vector, then this can uh, decrease the algebraic connectivity. So here is, uh, here is a lemma by Guidoli to prove that so, uh, let uh, G be a connected regular graph and rho be the, a fiddler vector for G. Uh, if we have the additional condition that uh, that the component of rho of an A is, is bigger or equal than its component on D, and also rho of C is at least rho of B, then this switching actually uh, does not increase the algebraic connectivity, in most of the cases, decrease the algebraic connectivity. So the argument is very simple. Uh, so suppose that, uh, so we have rho as the Fiddler vector of uh, G, so this means that uh, we can assume that it's a unit vector, and so uh, we have U equal to uh, row transpose times L row. And uh, suppose that L prime is the Laplacian matrix after doing the switching. Uh, so uh, if we multiply the same vector row to L, pr L prime from left and right, so what we get is that this is at least uh, mu prime the algebraic connectivity of the resulting graph because of this uh, equation that we saw here. Uh, but uh, the difference between uh, the, the initial graph and the graph which is obtained afterwards is just in four edges. So we can uh, simply compute this uh, uh, the difference. So as a result, we come up with this relation that mu minus mu prime is, is at least uh, uh, rho times L rho minus rho L prime uh, rho. So here is the difference that the four edges, which is uh, different. Uh, in the two graphs, and we see that this difference is 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 a non-negative number. So this means that uh, re mu is at, uh, is bigger or equal to, to mu prime. Actually, if uh, this last uh, equality inequality is 
strictly positive, then the mu prime decreases actually. So what we can do is to just perform this, uh, this switching over the regular graphs and see what happens uh, at the end. So let me uh, illustrate an example here. So we start uh, with a random cubic graph. So uh, our, uh, uh, our subject is about quartic graph, but for simplicity, I do it on, on cubic graph to see uh, because if we have a meaningful, if we were to meaningful uh, uh, example of quartic graph, it must be very big. But for uh, cubic graph, we we can get a good example with smaller number of vertices. So we start uh, with a random uh, cubic graph, and here is uh, its uh, spectral gap is is about uh, zero point eighty one. And then we do one switching. So we get uh, uh, a new cubic graph, but uh, with a spectral gap much smaller. And then we do it one more time. Again, we have a new cubic graph with much smaller spectral gap, and so on. So, and one more switching and then and then another one and then one more again one more switching so at the end we come up with with this graph so and uh, so and uh, we start with the spectral gap of 0 0.081 and we come up uh, finally with a spectral gap uh, 0 0.1 and this is a gra this graph is just uh, one of the graph uh, described in the theorem on the cubic graphs with with minimum spectral gap let me go back there yeah this is one of the graphs here if if you compute uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of the upper graphs here. <clears throat> so what we did is uh, just uh, uh, apply the switching on on a given quartic graphs, and then uh, we uh, we determine the final structure that we can get. But uh, so for the cubic graphs, almost switching is enough to to come up with this final uh, minimal graphs. But in quartic graphs, uh, the situation is much more complicated. This switching is not uh, enough, and afterwards you need uh, to have extra arguments to to come up with the final. Uh, final minimal graphs, which I'm going to present in the next uh, theorem. Um, so there are many details here, uh, but the main tool is switching, but this is not the only tool. Uh, more tools is needed to, to come up with this theorem, but uh, the details is, uh, is very tedious. I'm not going to the details, but the, the final result is that uh, so the quartic graphs with, with minimum spectral gap have this path-like structure. So uh, if you consider the, the block tree of the graph, it's actually here is a path. So here is the blocks of, of, the, of the quartic graph, minimal quartic graph. And each block has, is of a very particular uh, shape. So middle block are all of this shape and the uh, end blocks i mean the first block or, or the last block is is one of these three or one of these five uh, types of uh, blocks so by 
putting together these these blocks. So middle blocks should be only from this upper one, and the end blocks from this. In the bottom, then you can come up with a family of graph, uh, which are actually the the cortic graph with with minimum uh, algebraic connectivity uh, with a given number of vertices. So for for this family now we can. Uh, uh, go on to, to compute the algebraic connectivity and see what is the, the minimum algebraic connectivity of, uh, of the family of connected chordic graphs. <clears throat> so here is the result. We actually uh, computed the algebraic connectivity and uh, the algebraic connectivity is just uh, two times the one we had for for, for cubic case. So the minimum algebraic connectivity or spectral gap of connected quartic graph is uh, is about uh, four times pi square over n square. And from this, uh, the oldest field conjecture for quartic graph follows. Uh, so I want to give uh, the proof sketch of this theorem. It uses uh, uh, some nice ideas. Uh, so we start uh, uh, by this vector. So uh, consider vector of length m plus one, where each component uh, i is defined in this way. Um, so this vector is skew symmetric, which means that uh, uh, the i the i component from left is just the negative of the i component from right. So uh, so here is uh, one of the possible graphs, uh, one of the possible minimal graphs, which have. Uh, uh, in the structure theorem for quartic graph with minimum spectral gap. Uh, so this, uh, so suppose that this graph has uh, m plus one blocks, and then we put uh, the vectors we just defined on the on the cut vertices and the first and the last vertices as well. Uh, so this vector x is just the Fiddler vector for paths. So we we, uh, we we actually use um, uh, the Fiddler vector for paths to come up with the Fiddler vector for for the quartic graph with with minimal uh, spectral gap. So this is this is the idea. Uh, but this just gives uh, the Fiddler vector over the, the cut vertices, but we should uh, determine the other components of the vector over the other vertices, which are not cut vertices. Uh, we just uh, determine the rest by minimi minimization, which means that uh, so uh, uh, in the Rayleigh quotient, uh, every term is determined uh, by the edges of the graph, and for each black, uh, we have a we have a quartic form. We just minimize it. So, so for example, for for the second block, if you look at here, so the the first and the last component uh, is given, and we we uh, find the the remaining four components on that block by just minimization. Uh, so we come up with the resulting vector x prime, which is defined now over the whole graph, not just the, the cut vertices. And since the initial vector x is uh, skew symmetric, the next, uh, the resulting matrix, uh, vector here is also skew symmetric. Actually, you can uh, determine the components precisely and see uh, this holds. 
So uh, if we compute uh, uh, the Rayleigh quotient for this vector, then uh, it's at least the, the algebraic connectivity of this graph. So we can compute this Rayleigh quotient and we see that this is about four times pi two over n two. This is what, what just we wanted. So uh, we come up with an upper bound for, for the algebraic connectivity. So we need to prove uh, the other direction to show that the mu is actually uh, this desired, uh, desired quantity. <clears throat> So for the reverse, uh, I assume that y is a Fiedler vector, and now we we do uh, almost the reverse argument uh, we did uh, in the in the previous step. Then we consider the component of again on the on the cut vertices together with the, the first few or the last few vertices or the ending blocks. And uh, we see that this matrix, uh, this graph is, is symmetric. And so it, it can be seen that this uh, vector should be skew symmetric. Actually, this uh, also needs uh, further properties of Fiedler vector, which, uh, which we have them by, by some result. Uh, uh, which are proved uh, by, by Fiedler itself it's, uh, in its original paper. And uh, so this, the Fiedler vector of this matrix is this symmetric And so this is smaller vectors, uh, which are obtained by consider the components of the, on the cut vertices is also symmetric, uh, skew symmetric, which means that it's, it's orthogonal to one. So, and then, we look at the middle block. So on the middle block, uh, the components are, are like this. Uh, so these two components uh, uh, are, are equal because they have the same neighbors and also they, have, they are all equal to S and also for the other one, they also are equal to, to some value T. So uh, the part of Rayleigh quotient related to this uh, uh, to this block is uh, what just is written here over this block BK. So we can consider this as a function of S and T and then just minimize it. So we can do this and we see that uh, this function is minimized at this value for S and T, even here. And so the, this summation, which comes from the Rayleigh quotient over this block, we can see that is at least four over five times ZK minus ZK plus one over two. And ZK and ZK plus one are just the value of the Fiedler vector over the, the cut vertices of this block. And uh, what we get afterwards is that, uh, so we can, this is, so this last inequality was just for one block and then we can sum up this for all the blocks and uh, we get an inequality for, for the whole Rayleigh quotient of the whole graph. So we come up with this, that the, the Rayleigh quotient for actually the, uh, uh, is at least four uh, over five times uh, the sigma of, uh, in terms of zk's. And uh, again, by the property of Fiedler vectors, we can uh, have this uh, upper bound for, for the norm of the, the matrix uh, for the vector Fiedler vector y. And then you see that the mu of g, which was equal to uh, this value for y, is at least four times uh, uh, sigma z i minus z i plus one squared over 25 uh, uh, z i, the summation of z i squares. 
And uh, this uh, right hand side is just the, the Rayleigh quotient for the path of length uh, m plus uh, 5. And uh, so this is actually, it's bigger than the algebraic connectivity of the path because uh, algebraic connectivity is just minimum of this value over all possible z's. And uh, the algebraic connectivity of pass is known, and we just can put it here, and we come up with uh, this lower bound for mu. Uh, so we have that mu is it, uh, is bigger than or equal to four times pi two over n two. So we already obtained that uh, mu of g is less than or equal to this quantity, and now here we get the the reverse direction, and so. The, the theorem is actually proved, and uh, the minimum algebraic connectivity of, of cortic graph uh, is of this, this order, and consequently, uh, all the speed conjecture uh, follows for, for cortic graphs.